I was actually uh, playing the nine. So um, we have had a couple conversations about it. Um, just the ability to be versatile, um, play on the wing if you need me to, play in the nine. And I think also um, coming to Gotham and the fact that I was playing here um, or I play the nine here as well, that um, it's been in conversation a bit more than it has in the past. Um, so yeah, a little bit, but um, I think as you guys know, Blackco just in this moment um, wanted to see people play and see form. So I think those more in depth conversations will come um, once we get all together. All right, thank you, Jonathan. We will next go to Jenna Tonelli. Jenna, go ahead. Hi, Lynn. Uh, congratulations. Uh, again, I'm sure you're hearing that <laughs> all the time today, but very well deserved. Yeah. Um, so a couple of questions. So first of all, um, you know, something that Vladko said uh, this morning during the press conference was that um, in particular, your NWSL performance was big on, you know, ensuring your, your call to this roster. How much, you know, was that in the back of your mind, you know, with Gotham? And obviously you've had an incredible return to form from your injury and all that. But how much was that motivating you um, throughout the first half of the season this year? Yeah, I don't necessarily know if it was Vladko's words that were motivating me because my journey is a little bit different. I, I know I um, have to fight for everything. I know everybody has to fight for everything on the national team, but I feel like I really have to fight for my spot there. Um, and I am coming back from an injury. So I knew that I need to get more minutes, need to get more comfortable on the ball, et cetera, the plethora of things. And Gotham is the place that I'm going to do that. Um, with the national team, we are going into camps one, two, th three times, I think this year, um, before the world cup was named. So the majority of our time is spent with our club. So, um, for me, it was more about just getting a feel for the ball and putting my best foot forward. Um, and then obviously in the back of my mind, it's always the better I do, the better chance I give myself of making the team. But, uh, first and foremost was just, let me play the best soccer I can. Absolutely. And so today, this morning when you were on the Today Show, I don't know if, if you remember this, but there was like a small moment where you and Christy kind of like look at each other and, and smiled and it's kind of like felt in that moment like, oh my gosh, like we're here, we did it, like it's all happening. Do you remember that moment or just in general, how was it, you know, just getting that big announcement this morning on the Today Show? Um, I don't necessarily remember. I think I blacked out the whole time. <laughs> it was really incredible. You know, I think that um, moments like that and things that not only U.S. soccer, but Gotham are helping us and getting our name out, but also women's soccer, um, more exposure. It's it's incredible. So the Today Show was amazing. Um, I think I was smiling the whole time. I probably looked so excited and happy to be there because I really was. Uh, I don't remember that exact moment, but um, I'm sure it did happen. <laughs> well, thanks again and congratulations again. Thank you so much. Okay, our next questions will go to Nubia Finkland, then Sean McCaffrey, and then Courtney Stiff. So starting with Nubia. Hi, Lynn, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Hi. Okay, great. Um, it's been a busy week for you with contract extension, of course, making the World Cup roster. First of all, congratulations. Um, my first question, going into this year, there was a lot of uncertainty in the end of the cell with your position with Gotham, just tra trading from Kansas City let alone making um, national team roster. So just to have this, I guess, clarity and security at this point in your career this week, how does that make you feel? Yeah, it feels incredible. Um, I, th I think that for the rest of the world, there was uncertainty for myself. Uh, I always back myself 100%. Um, and I'm always going to put my best foot forward. So uh, knowing the roster is obviously amazing. It's incredible. I don't think I can put into words like what it means to me. Um, but I just wanted to know any kind of news. You know, I think that we we train so hard all the time um, that when it got to this point, I was like, I just want to know some kind of news. <laughs> we can either cry because I'm so excited or cry because my dream is now over. Um, but um, but yeah, so I, I definitely feel like there is uh, security, but not really like this is where the work starts. Um, we work so hard to get to here, but we haven't really done anything yet. We still need to go and win a World Cup. So um, it's just taking a day and a moment to let it sink in and then you start moving forward again. Yep, definitely. And my next question. So this week's Gotham game will celebrate the send off for the World Cup as well as June team. So just your thoughts on being a Black American and being able to represent your country this World Cup. Yeah, I think it's incredible. I'm really excited to be able to play one last game here um, before we go. It's a big game for us. Um, obviously, we're playing Chicago. It's like a uh, must-win game. Um, 
And I hope that we give our fans something um, to cheer about and to get excited about when we come back. Um, and then being a black woman playing in the US, I've said this like a million times and I, it still uh, remains true to me. I think that when you see somebody who looks like you on the field, um, you can believe that you can do it. And so once you believe something, then you can actually do it. So um, I think it's incredible. I don't think there's, when I was growing up, there was enough black women playing soccer. So I'm happy to be able to pass that down to the next generation so they can hopefully continue on the legacy. Um, and I just think soccer should look like the US with a whole bunch of different races and ethnicities and sexual orientation. So I'm happy I can represent the mixed girls out there. Great, thank you so much and best of luck. Thank you. All right, media members, reminder to raise your hand if you have a question. Next, Sean McCaffrey, then Courtney Stiff, Jonathan Tim, Will, Jenna Tinelli. So we'll first go to Sean McCaffrey. Then I haven't seen in about, what, 22 hours? How's everything? Anything new? <laughs> Let's see. It's for national team squad. You're on a morning TV show. FY State Building. What's next for you? Hopefully winning a World Cup. Hopefully winning on the 25th and then winning a World Cup. That would be ideal. Okay. Well, unfortunately, Hyfe didn't call on me during Latko's presser, so I have a whole bunch of questions for you. Okay. My, here we go. I didn't get asked, so you're the um, victim, I guess. I mean, Kelly, Mewis, yourself, same team, traveled. I mean, how great is that? The synergy that the three of you will have, should you be on the field together, knowing exactly the other's tendencies, preferences on how to get the ball, how to play the ball out, things like that. How big of an advantage is that going to be over people that you've been with sporadically in various camps? I think just like you said, I think it is an advantage for us. Um, uh, I think that on the soccer pitch, you know, it's not a one person sport. It's 11 people on the field trying to beat another 11 people. So um, the faster we can all bond and get together and get on the same page, the better. And luckily for me with Kelly and Christy, um, I've had months to do that. But with that being said, I it's not like we as a team, the U.S. team have just one camp off like there's been years of relationships there with some people um it's it is more sporadic but i think that the driving force is that we are just so competitive so we're willing to talk work it out um and and figure it out now the, the captain of course is out with injury and no one was said to be named or wasn't mentioned who would be named captain or when it would be done previously but how big of a loss is that that she's out? And do you expect it to wind up being maybe leadership by committee or just one person carrying it like forward when a decision is made as to who would be the captain? Should it be a sole captain? Yeah, I'm not going to speak on like the who's going to be captain. I have no idea. Um, I do think that when somebody wears the armband, it's not just them carrying the entire load. There's a, a whole group of people behind the scenes, the group of experience that you, you see that lead in different ways. Every single person on the team leads in a different way. So even though Becky was our captain, you saw you had Pino, you had Lindsay, Rose, um, Kelly, like there's a, a huge group of Mal, a huge group of people who also can step into those roles as well. So I'm interested to see who's gonna uh, captain us going forward. Um, but yeah, Becky is a, is a huge loss. There's nobody like her. Um, there's nobody who can who can admit what she does and um, have the the years and years of experience that she brings to the team. Um, so she's going to be a huge loss, um, obviously, as as just that leader and obviously an amazing soccer player. But I think moving forward. Becky has given us all the tools that we need um, to go forward and she's going to be with us the whole entire way um, there in spirit. And I'm sure she's texting everybody because um, she's a true professional. So she will be missed, but um, she definitely won't be forgotten because she's already passed down all these, these amazing lessons. Thank you, John. We are going to move to the next question because we have a lot in queue. Um, we'll wrap it up with Jeff Kasuf, but in this order, Courtney, Jonathan, Jenna, Jason, Jeff. So going to Courtney now. Uh, hi, Lynn. Courtney Stith here from the, uh, doing some writing for The Athletic. I guess I'm just curious, you know, last time I talked to you, you mentioned about, uh, talked about being really focused on the process. So I guess mm -hmm. just kind of reflectively, how has it been, like, how has the process been in, you know, kind of reaching this goal of getting to your first World Cup? <laughs> the process has been um, up and down. Um, you know, some days I'm better at it than others. Um, but I, I really do think that I am just living in the moment. You know, I, 
I'm super excited for the World Cup, obviously, but right now um, what I have at hand is still with Gotham. And so preparing for our next game here um, against Chicago is huge for the team. And like I said, we we do need that win. So that's going to be a huge moment for us. And and then in turn, me continuing to prepare for Gotham will make me a good player for the U.S. So um, so, yeah, I think that. I'm still doing that. I think that I'm going to take that with me into the World Cup as well. Um, just one game at a time, one moment at a time, um, one training at a time. Just soak everything in because at least for me, you never you never know what you're going to get with the national team um, and you shouldn't take anything for granted. So I'm just going to soak in all the moments and just um, enjoy the journey. Awesome. Thank you. And just as a quick follow up, uh, are there any players you're excited to play with on the national team? Uh, all of them. Literally every single one. I'm super, super excited. Um, I've never played with Savannah DeMello before, so I'm um, excited to see her um, out there. But every single one of uh, the 22 of them, I'm like super excited to get back and play with them. And um, anytime it's you're in the national team, it's like a bunch of crazy, psychotic, crazy and talented people. So I can't wait to be there. Thank you, Courtney. All right, Jonathan, Jenna, Jason, and we end on Jeff. Thank you all. Um, we will do one question because we're getting Christy Mewis and Kelly O'Hara as well. So we thank you for being patient with us. Um, you know, we want to give you as much access as we can. So Jonathan, you're up next. Thanks. Um, Linda, a point that you just made about the diversity of this team, it has come a long way in just the last few years. Yeah. As, as we all know, and I wonder if there have been any moments when you step back and noticed that or remarked about it in conversations with teammates. Um, like racially diverse or? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think that there is definitely like a, a silent um, understanding of what's happening. I think that also, you know, you see the BWPC was formed um, in 2020. Um, and has been promoting that organization as well. Um, so there's definitely been talk about it, but I don't think that it's an everyday conversation. Um, obviously, we we didn't choose how we were born or what families we were born into. We just are very happy that there is representation for people who want to play the sport and um, people that feel like there is a place for them in soccer that might look like me or look like somebody else, um, which, you know, a lot of us didn't have growing up. So um, there's definitely like a, a unspokenness about it. Thank you, Jonathan. Next question to Jenna, then Jason. Last question to Jeff. Yeah, thanks so much again, Lynn, for taking all the time today. I know it's probably been a lot, so appreciate it. Um, yeah, my question is, is more Gotham focused. Um, obviously, a big game in the send off game this weekend, hoping that you win. But, you know, when you're away at the World Cup, you've obviously made like a big three year commitment to Gotham. You know, how much do you how much do you, you know, do you check in on the team? Like what's kind of going to be your relationship with Gotham while you're away at the World Cup as one of the leaders on Gotham? Yeah, I definitely will. Uh, be up to date uh, you know there's still games being played um while we're away just because we're away doesn't mean the world stops so definitely being up to date and stuff but the things that you have to do as a professional athlete is the ability to compartmentalize and while I'm here with Gotham the national team is always in the back of my mind but my f full focus is on Gotham and then when I'm there at the world cup my full focus has to be with the world cup with Gotham in the back of my mind um, I think that's what makes us great and incredible athletes, our ability to fully give ourselves to which team we're on in the moment. So I'll be up to date. Um, I obviously I'm here for three years. <laughs> They're not kicking me out. Thank goodness. Um, and I wish all the girls the best of luck, obviously going forward. Um, but yeah, I'm going to give all of my attention to the national team. Thanks, Jenna. And our last question goes to Jeff Kasu. Jeff, go ahead. Jeff, do we have you? It looks like you're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry, my, my fancy mic has a mute button. I, I was a rookie mistake. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lynn, congrats on making the team. Um, just, just wondering, I know this is kind of big picture, but you know, obviously the, the league, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about sort of where you started in the league, you know, Western New York, obviously sort of making a name there and then, and then coming through to North Carolina and now, and now at Gotham, um, 
you know, it's, it's a unique story in that, you know, in past world cups, that league opportunity wasn't there for players to kind of have that as a, a proving ground. I, I don't know if it's too fresh, but just kind of, you know, wondering how much you've thought about that given thought to kind of like, you know, how that's brought you to this moment to, to have that, you know, platform as, as a pro league. Yeah. Um, I don't, even though this is like the big moment of like my career and getting named to a roster, I think about this all the time. Um, I don't know if I get even call up to the national team, if there's an NWSL team, you know, I didn't go through the youth system. Um, and so I think that it's just another opportunity, another way to be seen. You, like I said, look at Savannah DeMello. I'm sure she's going to be a huge story. Um, she deserves it so much, but um she played her way onto this team in this league. She hasn't been having an incredible season um, and it deserves a spot on the, on the national team and the world cup team. So um, I think that, you know, you just never know your journey. You never know what is going to happen. And this is a super competitive league. I think you look at the table and the top team and the bottom team, I don't really know the, the points <laughs> disparity but it's tight and a last place team can beat a first place team on any given day and I think that that competition and that competitiveness and the world-class athletes every single day that you're playing against every single week that you're playing against is what helps this league and what will help us hopefully win a world cup so I do I think about it a lot all the time I know my journey has been up and down but um, I'm super proud to be able to play in this league and um, it's given me a lot of opportunities with the national team. All right, and we finish up with Jason Anderson. Jason. Uh, hi, Lynn. Thanks for speaking with us. Congratulations, uh, as everyone is saying. Thank um, you. I, I wanted to ask sort of a bigger picture question. You, you came so close in 2019 and then with the Olympics even closer. Um, over that time, uh, what areas of your game do you think you've honed and developed to get you you know, over that line where you're, you're, you're really on the roster, you're going to the world cup. Yeah. I would say my mental game. Um, I think that, uh, you know, we have a lot of talent on the, on the team. Everybody has a talent. Everybody brings something special, something that makes you go, Oh my gosh, I can't believe they, they can actually do that. Um, but it's mentality. I think that um, looking back, Obviously, I wanted to make that World Cup roster in 2019. Obviously, I wanted to be able to make be on the full roster for the Olympics. Luckily for me, obviously, COVID happened um, and opened up the roster. But I don't know if I was in a mental state back then to prepare or be ready for those moments. And I feel like um, as I've gotten older, I've recognized that the mental side of the game is kind of the most important piece for me. Um, and I've really, um, you know, developed that and trained that because I think it, you have to train it just like you do training on the pitch as well. Um, so I would say like, that's the biggest part of my game that I have, have worked on is just um, being able to stay more level, um, not let things get to me and um, just play the, the game the way that I know how to play. Thanks. This is not your first rodeo with the World Cup, but I think you said it this morning, you know, it still kind of felt like the first time. So just kind of some more of your feelings, especially on being like one of the veterans on the team, on the back line, especially now with, with no Becky Sauerbrunn, just kind of how are you envisioning your, your role on this World Cup and what are you looking forward to? Yeah, um, I'm so excited to, to be going and for this to be my fourth World Cup. And even though it is my fourth, it, like I said this morning, it feels like my first. and. Um, the excitement levels are to that degree. Um, I think, you know, it, it being not my first rodeo and being one of the oldest players on the team and one of the most experiences experience, I think that's what I'm going to bring. I think I'm going to bring experience. And I, you know, I know, I know how these things go. Um, I know how wild and crazy of a ride it is. I know that um, I know what it takes to win one. So I think that I'll be bringing all of, all of that, knowledge and experience um to this team and you know help out the players who it is their first time or maybe second time um and just yeah do whatever i can to help the team win thank you jenna we'll come back to you if you have a follow-up just please re-raise your hand next we'll go to sean mccaffrey sean thank you for taking the time with us today as you said it's your Fourth World Cup, did they hit different? Did, did you feel maybe in early ones, oh yeah, I've got this to lock. Oh, I'm not too sure. Was this one maybe a bit of a surprise? Just how would you separate 
the initial feeling of, hey, you're there? I think that they've all been different. Um, it just, that's just the way it goes, right? You know, you're at different places in your career or with the team. Um, but this one was really special for me. Um, it's been a long road back, uh, having gotten injured last summer and, um, put a lot of effort and my, my full focus into making this team and, um, not only making it, but hopefully winning another world cup. So that's what I've had my eye on this entire time. And, um, I'm just really thankful that I, was able to do it. All right, next we'll go to Nubia. Hey Kelly, so interesting fact that I found out that you have a chance to be one of five players to join Pele as one of the only players to win three World Cup titles. So how did that make you feel about the chance to make history? Amazing. Uh, I, I think I knew about, I knew that Pele was one of the players who has only won three, um, like you said. Uh, there's a couple of us that have a chance to to do that and to to be part of um, a piece of history like that. So, yeah, it feels it's it's very exciting, um, a lot of anticipation. But to me, it's obviously it would be great, but just just winning in general is is enough. All right. Our next question is Jonathan Tannenwald. Jonathan. Thanks. Hey, Kelly, Jonathan Tenemol from the Philly Enquirer. Congrats on yet another run. Um, we were talking with Sophia Smith earlier on, on the U.S. soccer call, and she goes about noting that somebody asked her what her memories were of 99, and Sophia had to politely answer that she was not born yet. And then even better than that, went on to say that she is taking Alyssa Thompson under her wing. And I think that all of us who are in our 30s, our backs just went out simultaneously um but in all in all seriousness you know this team is so young it's a moment we've all been waiting for for a long time and becky's out and we all figure you're going to have an even bigger leadership role in this group because of it where do you see your place in all of that yeah i mean um losing becky is a huge blow to this team um I'm devastated for her personally and I'm devastated for this team that she's not going to be a part of it. I can't talk about it much because I'll probably start crying. But um, that being said, I think that, like you said, we have a really young team um, that is going to be really exciting. And I think, like you said, uh, Becky not being there, it's going to put a lot of responsibility on all of us players who, who are veterans, who are experienced, who are the oldest of the bunch and um, who know how these things go and what it takes to win. So um, yeah, I think, I think we will all be feeling an added pressure um, of responsibility because of that. Thank you, Jonathan. Next, we'll go back to Jenna Tonelli, then Jeff Kasuf, Sean McCaffrey, and finish with Courtney Stiff. Okay. Thank you so much, Chris. You can ask your Gotham question. Sorry. Yeah, my Gotham <laughs> question. No, it's okay. Um, you know, obviously you, you know, you signed with Gotham as a free agent, but you were coming off an injury and, you know, now you've played some significant minutes at Gotham and been a big contributor on the team. So how much has your time at Gotham and the support from the team been important in making sure that you were named to this roster for the World Cup? Yeah, you know, when Juan called me to congratulate me um, when he found out the news, um, I said a huge thank you to him because Gotham, and, and I said the same thing to Yael, um, Gotham has played a huge part in me, you know, being able to make this roster and being healthy um, and getting back from injury, which was a really, really tough and, you know, a lot of question marks along the road. Um, that Yeah, they, they were super patient with me. They, they were so supportive through the off season and, and into preseason and just, um, understood, you know, what, what I was going through and, and, um, what I needed. And again, they have been, um, the most supportive and, um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't probably be on this team if I was, um, with any other team right now, I think. Awesome. And, uh, get, getting the win on Sunday is a uh, one last thank you. I mean, it's the only thing on my mind right now. So. <laughs> awesome. Thanks again. And congrats again. Yeah. Thank you. All right, uh, we will round it out with Jeff Kasuf, Sean McCaffrey, and Courtney Stitt. Jeff. Hey Kelly, congrats on making the team. Um, Thank you. Uh, 
you know, Alex was talking maybe an hour or so ago about a little bit of what you just touched on in terms of like the younger team, younger players guiding them through, you know, a moment they haven't been through. And I was just kind of curious, like what, I mean, you've been through like 2011, maybe there wasn't that much attention, you know, it grew in 15, 19 was a huge thing. Like, how do you kind of like tangibly, like, what does the tangible grind look like there that you can like show them or or tell them? I mean, th- there's so much sort of, you know, extracurricular, right. And, and just like, I'm just kind of curious what that looks like in terms of, of how you make that, um, I, I don't know, get that point across to them. Yeah, I think that it's, it's difficult to do it tangibly because it's hard to, um, exp- or, you know, give it, give a tangible example or show them uh, if they haven't been through it yet, right? So it's really about sharing stories and kind of like, there's a saying like share scars and talk about times that were, that didn't go your way or were really hard for the team um, or you personally, uh, so that they understand that like, that's part of the journey and that's part of the the grind and the up and down of riding the wave of winning ultimately winning a world cup. Um, so yeah, I think it's, I think it's more so just having those conversations with them, um, making sure they understand what's at stake, how hard it is, how stressful it is. But at the same time, I know going through this, you know, three, three times and now this will be my fourth, like you got to enjoy those moments and, and kind of enjoy the journey because if you're too focused on the, on the final, um, result, you, you're going to get lost, uh, along the way. And, and I think that in the three times that I've gone and the teams that I've been on, we've, we've been really good at that. Um, and I, and I've learned from older players and, you know, now, like you said, it's, it's my responsibility to pass that along to the younger ones. All right. Uh, we'll go to Sean McCaffrey and round it up with Courtney Stead. Blanco was actually at a recent home game of yours when you didn't play. I, I saw you in here together with someone else. Was that a bit of an anxious moment for you that coach is here? I'm not playing. I mean, you're, you're a known entity, of course. Tell me where, where your head was, your thought process during that process. Yeah, no, I was I was very uh, anxious uh, leading up to, you know, finding out about the team, mostly because I, you know, had to sit out a couple games because of my ankle. Um, when I was playing, I, you know, I felt pretty good because – you're playing, you, you're like, I can, I can at least have some control over this, but, but um, with having to sit out that, that kind of takes it out of your control. But for me, it was, I, I realized that I just needed to, to figure out a way to get healthy, get back to being on the field and to be loading and to, and to hope that ultimately that, you know, the end goal would be July 20th um, to be, you know, peaking and, um, but yeah, it was definitely a, a nervous and anxious time for <laughs> the last couple of weeks. But I think that's that's regardless of if you were out injured or um, were playing. I think everyone was was feeling stress for sure. Thank you. And our last question, Courtney Stith. Courtney, go ahead. Hi, Kelly. Uh, Courtney Stith here. I know you've been asked about the younger players on the team, but two of your Gotham teammates, it is their first World Cup coming up. I guess I'm just curious, you know, how it feels to have not only your club teammates on, but also any advice that you've given them. I'm assuming it's probably different than, you know, much younger players on the squad who are still new to their soccer careers. Yeah. Um, I'm so excited that Christy and Lynn are going to their first world cup. Um, the two of them deserve it. They have proved themselves. And and I think that they're going to have, um, you know, they're going to have some really cool stories come out of, of this world cup, uh, because of their performance. And, um, I, I just, we haven't really talked much about world cup. Like we just have been excited about, you know, and anticipating like getting into camp and, you know, um, the start of everything. So, uh, I'm sure I'll, I'll share some stories, but with them, but they're both so, um, seasoned and experienced and they've been through their own obstacles and their own, you know, um, hurdles that they've had to overcome to get to this point. And, you know, you look at Lynn, she was, um, she, she stepped into big shoes in the last Olympics and, you know, came, played the Netherlands game, played amazing there. So they, they both, I think are very, um, ready and prepared for this stage. Uh, so I I don't think I'll have to give them much advice. It'll just be fun to go on the journey with them. Great. Well, thank you so much, Kelly. We appreciate it. Thanks. Appreciate you. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll start in the order that they've come in. So far, Nubia, Jenna Tanelli, and Jonathan Tannenwald. Nubia, you're first. Hi, 
Christy, first of all, congrats on making the World Cup roster. You are the oldest to debut on a national team for your first um, World Cup roster, but even with that, you have over a decade of professional experience. So what kind of leadership do you hope to bring to the roster? Oh my God, I didn't know that fact. That's so sad that I'm the oldest one. <laughs> um, I mean, it feels really good. I do feel a little bit of a sense of... Um, a different responsibility that I would normally have. I'm probably one of the older, I haven't looked at it, but I'm probably one of the older ones on the team. So I think I do need to take responsibility and be a little bit of a leader, not only just on the field, but also off the field as well. Um, so I'm definitely taking that into consideration and already trying to um, think, think of things and ways that I can help the team out in that role. Thank you. Our next question will go to Jenna Sinelli. Jenna? Hi, Christy. Um, thanks so much for taking the time and congratulations, as I, I know you've been hearing all day. Um, so just wanted to ask about this morning on the Today Show. I'm not sure if you remember because, I, you know, Lynn was, I asked Lynn the same question. She said she blacked out, so she, she didn't remember. <laughs> but there was this one moment where she kind of looked over at you and you guys looked at each other and smiled and it kind of seemed to the viewers like it was like a, a real like, wow, we're here, we did it moment. So not sure if you remember that exact moment, but in general, like, how did it feel to be there this morning making that announcement and like you you finally, you know, got this, it's done, you did it and you're going to the World Cup? Yeah, I think it's been really special, especially um, sharing it with Lynn and Kelly, because I just know how badly both of them or all three of us wanted it. Um, so it's been really cool to kind of go through the journey with them, even though it was a very stressful journey. Um, but I mean, I couldn't have asked for better people to do it with. They have been incredible this whole time and such a great support system for me. Um, yeah, me, Lynn and Kelly, we were kind of just pinching ourselves today. Like we couldn't believe it, that it was being announced today and we were going to be on the Today Show and just kind of, I mean, I feel like we found out a little bit earlier, yes, but today was kind of the true reveal. So it really set in today and it felt good. All right, our next question to Jonathan Tannenwald. Hey, Christy, Jonathan Tannenwald from the Philly Inquirer. And I think back to February when we chatted in Nashville after the big game you played in Yeshiva and stuff. And I wonder, you know, if, if you sit back today and reflect on, yeah, you, you know that you really earned it with, with those particular games that you played in big moments for the national team and, and, and what Flatko said to you along the way. Yeah, I definitely think that, um, I, I am not one that gets a whole bunch of chances. So I do know that when I do get a chance, I have to perform and I have to take it very seriously and I have to do what the team needs. Um, so I do think that it was, uh, very helpful that I had a couple of just small, uh, solid performances throughout this, the spring. Um, I kind of went through a little lull there where, where I wasn't really getting any minutes. So I think that for me to step in and to just put in a solid performance, I definitely think that it did me some favors. And I don't know if I would be on the roster if it wasn't for those um, for those games. So I am very thankful that I was able to um, kind of show what I could do in those opportunities. Thank you, Christy. Our next question will go to Sean McCaffrey. Sean. Thank you for taking the time today for us. It was, it's getting mentioned numerous times in this and with your teammates about the age of the team. Actually, in one of the emails sent out, the age is 28 and a half in the previous two World Cups, it was 28. And age, now it's being mentioned as younger, but elsewhere, I mean, things older, the team is so much older. How would you address that? I mean, two World Cups have been won, you've gone up by half a year. To me, that's inconsequential. What, what are your thoughts on that? I'm sorry, can you just, I couldn't really, hear a couple of the words you were saying what did can you just uh repeat the question from the previous two world cups 15 and 19 mm -hmm. the age went from 28 now it's 28.5 some people are saying oh it's a younger team other people are saying oh the team is getting very old with half a year difference and two cups how would you address that respond to that yeah i mean i don't i i honestly don't really think it is about age i think we have some amazing, amazing um, older players on the team who have been to World Cups who are just absolutely going to grab this team and grab the younger players and bring the absolute best out of them. And I think that's what's going to be so special about this World Cup is we have um, such a huge age gap between the youngest and the oldest. And I think just bringing all the generations together is going to be unstoppable and it's going to be a pretty cool thing to see. 
All right, our next question goes to Courtney Stith, then we'll go Jeff, Jenna, Jason, and end on Sean. Courtney. Uh, hi, Christy, Courtney Stith here. Congratulations on making your first World Cup roster. Um, so previously you had said on this next podcast, just you just talked about how important it was to kind of make this roster. I guess I'm just curious, you know, how you're feeling now um, and if you've kind of changed the view on your career so far. Yeah, um, I definitely uh, took some time to enjoy it. I feel extremely fulfilled to be named to be named on the roster. Um, it feels amazing. I do feel like all the work that I put in actually meant something up until now. But now I feel like after stepping back away from those emotions, I now have a new motivation. And that's, of course, to win the World Cup and to do whatever I can for this team and for this country. So I think that after, of course, enjoying it and being super excited about being on the roster now, I'm just completely shifted to winning it. Thank you, Christy. Our next question to Jeff Kasuf. Jeff? Thanks, Krista. Thanks, Christy. Congrats on making the roster. Um, just, just kind of wondering about that moment, actually, I guess a week ago almost now, of, of getting that call of, you know, obviously everything that built up to this, um, you know, for, for so long. Um, but what was whatever you can share about the convo with, um, with Laco, what, what was that like? And, um, you know, maybe what were the aftermath, what was the aftermath of that in terms of like, was, who was your first call that were you were around family, anything like that? Um, I was by myself in my apartment. We had had training earlier in the day and he didn't, um, end up calling me until four. So it was a very draining, emotional, uh, kind of wait around day. Um, so that was very painful. Of course, I think I started crying before I even saw Vlacko's face on the FaceTime, <laughs> just because everything was coming into that moment. Like, I just feel like I've been waiting my whole life to hear those words. Um, I've been waiting since April camp, like the countdown has just been crazy. It's been super stressful, just kind of being a bubble player. So, um, it was very, very emotional. And I think that, um, you know, it was written all over my face and, um, I don't really even know what I said to him. Honestly, I think I was just like, thank you so much. I'm so excited. And he said a couple of nice things about me and, um, yeah, now I just, I'm just so excited. I called my girlfriend immediately. I called my parents, I called my sister and they all have just been such like huge, huge, um, people in my life through this process. Cause I'm sure I've been such a pain in the ass cause I've been so stressed for so long. Um, but they have been my absolute rocks and everything to me. So, yeah. Thank you. All right. Our last four questions, Janet Tonelli, Jason Anderson, Sean McCaffrey, John Lupo. Thanks again, Christy. Um, and thanks for so much for, for your honesty on all this. It's really great to hear about your journey and, and congrats, so well-deserved. But um, my question is, is more about Gotham. Obviously one more game left before you go off to the World Cup. So just wondering if you could talk a bit about the team and, and how they've helped you prepare yourself to be ready for the world stage. Yeah, I mean, it's a whole new Gotham this year and it's so cool to be a part of. Um, I think Juan and the coaching staff has come in and just grabbed by the team by the horns. I mean, I think they have stepped in and completely taken over in such a good way. They have been such a positive influence on us because I think obviously last year it was a little bit of like a negative feeling around the team and just around our performances and stuff. It didn't feel good. And now um, we have some new faces in and we have Juan, and I think it's just, it feels really refreshed. Um, the team has been so supportive, so incredible trainings are, um, you know, so competitive, so good. Um, and we're going into this weekend and we need three points. We haven't had it in a couple games. So I think, uh, we're definitely due for three points. So all of us are really eager and excited to get three points before we go to the world cup. Thanks, Jenna. Thanks, Christy. Next up will be Jason Anderson. Jason. Oh. There we go. Christy, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Okay. Uh, congratulations. Uh, big, a big day. I'm sure probably a long day as well. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, uh, I kind of had my questions uh, taken by the smart people who went ahead of me. Um, so I just wanted to throw in, um, when you've talked to the people that have been uh, to the World Cup that are close with you, whether that's your sister, whether that's uh, anyone else that, that comes to mind, 
Um, what advice have you sought from them? Because this is kind of a totally unique experience, as I'm sure today is kind of spelling out for you. Yeah, I mean, from what I've heard, it's, um, you know, it's grueling, it's competitive, it's everyone's going to give you your best game. It's just like, it's kind of what you dream about, like as a competitor, just growing up and just being a professional athlete. It's just, it's what you dream about. Like, this is like the pedestal. This is like the biggest competition that you ever want to be a part of. So um, I think it's just all about staying focused. I'm sure that things can get lost, but um, I think it's all about staying focused and taking one game at a time. My sister said to just always stay ready. You never know what's going to happen. So I think that's also important for me as well. I need to just really focus and give the team what they need, but also be ready at the same time, just because anything can happen. Thank you. Our last two questions, Sean McCaffrey and John Lupo. Sean. Thank you for taking yet another question. Vladko had mentioned that he acquired you earlier in your career, saying that you were a good young up and coming player. You were with the national team earlier. Now you're back with it under him. Do you think there's a particular quality or qualities about you that others miss? Do you see or feel like the game evolved from that time that you possess different qualities, stronger qualities that would be more of a joy to be at this level yet again? Yeah, um, I think I I think Vlako, of course does like me as a player. He drafted me in 2013. Um, I do think he values my left foot a lot. And I do think that I bring um, kind of just like a hardworking, gritty, um, down to the point type of player. And I think that um, teams always need players like that. And I do think that he sees value in that. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm so happy to be back. So great that he's been calling me in for these past two and a half years and I'm just so ready to go to the World Cup with him. I feel like it's like a full circle, like he drafts me into the professional league and now I'm going to a World Cup with him. It's just crazy. And it's it's the coolest experience ever. All right, our last question to John Lupo. Uh, Christy, congratulations on making the World Cup team. So just talk about sharing this moment and then sharing the experience of playing in the World Cup with your teammates, with Lynn being named to her first World Cup roster and Kelly going to another World Cup. How special do you think that's going to be? Yeah, I know. Like I said earlier, I just think, I mean, it's so special that I get to go with Kelly, who's of course been to, I think she's been to two other World Cups and Lynn for her first World Cup. Um, and I just have such a great bond with them here at Gotham. And I just feel like I'm going to have a little bit of family with me at the World Cup, which is just super special. Um, so I'm so excited for them and I can't wait to go on this journey with them. All right, everyone. Thank you, Christy. Congratulations. Congratulations and credit to all of them because uh, it's an amazing achievement and, and I think they're going to live an experience that's going to stay with them forever. And it's a moment of pride as well for us as a club because, you know, like it, it's what we do, you know, like it's uh, the result of the work they do here is what gets them into, into those uh, important rosters. And for us, it's definitely a moment of pride, of honor, and, and they know that they're not only representing themselves, they're representing all their teammates, ourselves, the club, when when they go to Australia and New Zealand. So very, very pleased uh, for them. And, and especially in this case, no, we, we are a, a US team. Uh, so I think it's probably one of the hardest clubs in, oh, sorry, national teams in the world to get into because obviously the track record of being the, the reigning world champion. So, so special congratulations to the news that, that them three make the roster today. No? All right, we will go in this order and thank you uh, for that response. Nubia, Jenna Tonelli, Sean McCaffrey, Courtney Stith, John Lupo, and then Jonathan Tannenwald. So we'll start at the top with Nubia. Hey coach, so um, a few players came in um, this press conference already talking about um, how they thank not only you, but the entire coaching staff for getting them ready for the World Cup, whether it was calming nerves or getting back from injury. So just want to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, about Kelly? Yeah, that it was about Kelly, no? I heard the question, but I don't know if it was about someone. Nubia, go ahead. Say it again. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, so um, a few players have um, already come on a co press conference to say that um, 
thanking you and the, just the entire coaching staff as a whole for helping them prepare for the World Cup, all three players, whether that's Kelly getting back from injury, Christy calming her nerves. So just your thoughts on that. Well, for us, uh, we when we prepare things, uh, we prepare the team. We also prepare, as I said from the beginning, an individual plan to 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 develop these players to help them in in what are their individual targets. And obviously, for them, it was very important to get ready to go to the World Cup. We knew that for that, uh, there was different stages. You know, Kelly. Uh, was coming after a long term injury, but she wasn't even in the roster in preseason. She was still recovering. Um, so we've been very patient with her, making sure that she, when she was playing and the, her comeback needed to be at the right time, not rushing the, the procedure and then making sure that when she was playing, she was at her best. So uh, she's done everything on her side with just facilitators. So she's been fantastic. Then Christy and Lynn, they were in the roster. Uh, then, you know, when Christy came back, she needed a little bit of time before uh, starting those games against LA. In LA, we, we made those targets. And since then, it's been really hard. No? She obviously coming on the back of a very tough season last year with the club. It was about helping her and recovering that confidence in her game. And I think with, with Christy, I've said it a lot. It's not only what she brings offensively, defensively, she's working unbelievably hard and I think she sent what her first is is her first woke up and it was uh, uh, you know we've spoken a lot it's a lot of pressure because everyone wants to get there she really wanted to get there and and she she's done really well to end that spot and then Lynn uh, obviously I think actually when we made the trade she was already in camp after again a long uh, long term injury but with her is she, you know, this is probably a lot of competition in that position, but from the beginning, she's shown everyone. Uh, I think the data, the data, of course, is there. The, the data of the ball, the data on the ball of all she brings on is, is also being uh, outstanding with her performances. So the fact that we set up to to help them three to achieve those targets and, and that they get it is, is a... It's a, it's a privilege, but at the same time, I want to thank them because realistically, it's been them, the one putting the work and, and trusting what we're asking them to do. So I'm very, very pleased and, and proud of, of them three because they have different, different ways, you know, different moments. That's where we try to individualize everything and, and trying to help them and be successful. It's is, is really, you know, it's really pleasant. All right, our next three up, Jenna Tonelli, Sean McCaffrey, Courtney Stitt. Jenna, go ahead. Hi, Coach. Um, thank you so much for taking the time today. Um, just want to talk a little bit about the upcoming match against Chicago. Um, of course, you know, all eyes are on the World Cup, but you still got one more game with all your all your internationals before they leave. Um, obviously, Gotham hasn't picked up three points in a little bit. So, you know, what can we expect to see from the team and hopefully give all the internationals uh, three points for the send off? Yeah, I told them today, you know, that they need to make sure that we that they live with the, the feeling of, of having those three points. We're gonna do what we always do, you no, know, like prepare the best we can, look at the things that we need to improve. I think the last game was one of the games where we dominate the most possession and, and have more entries on the final third and more passes on the final third and more shots, but we need to to clear up a little bit the work on that final final third now and be more effective uh, and so we're focusing a lot on that on the aspect and and getting ready i think there was a lot of positives as well in that last game some key moments they weren't going uh, all the way but we just need to keep competing the the you know we can't forget neither that we were playing that game to go temporarily if we win uh, top of the league then obviously with the scores from portland and washington we weren't gonna be but the team is doing really well. We are obviously haven't won a game the last the last few matches, but but there has been a lot of positives as well. So I said what I said when we were winning. When we win, we're not the best team. When we lose, we're not the worst team. It's a question of believing in the style, the work that we do every day at training, and hopefully Sunday can be that day that that we pick up three points again and and make our fans proud. No, I think we played. Uh, I don't have the stats, but we've played a lot of games away from home. I think we had the best team or maybe the second now in away from home also because we've played so many games. So now we have three league games in a row at home. So we really we really want to push uh, and get those fans excited to watch us play and to, to watch us win. Thank you, Coach. Next, Sean McCaffrey, Courtney Stith, John Lugo. 
Sean. Coach, thank you for your time. As mentioned, you, you're definitely losing three, possibly as many as half a dozen players. How big of an adjustment is that? Is that for you in your game planning? Will you fill those gaps on players that you have? Will you sign temporary players? How exactly are you going to be working around this, through this? Yeah, well, that we are working, we always work really hard in the recruitment and being ready. So obviously with six players coming out, it's not a secret. We will have to have some some national team replacement players coming coming in the in the squad. We will see if some of them are coming in, in permanent basis, but we can't disclose anything. But obviously the, the club is working really hard behind the scenes because even to comply with the rules uh, losing six players to the World Cup it means that we will go below the number of um, you know the, the legal players or the, the the rules number of players that you have to have in the roster so so yeah we will we will be adding some players but at the same time that's why from the start of the season we've seen so many players uh, Feeling in into different roles, understanding what we want, and step by step growing into into those uh, you know different positions to to when it came to this moment as well, be as ready as as we can. All right, our next question goes to Courtney Stith, followed by John Lupo, Jonathan Tannenwald. If you're just joining us and you'd like to ask a question, please click the raise hand icon. Uh, hi, Coach Courtney Stith here. Uh, yeah, just a question about the upcoming game of um, just how it is coming back home um, and having, you know, having a send off game that I feel like is probably a little bit more sentimental than your average, you know, game at home. Yeah, obviously, you know, I think it's always a special game. We can't forget the last time we were at home. We had 15,000 people beating the the record of of this club. I think every every game for us as coaches is the most important. The next game is the most important, and this case is no different. No, I think uh, we're gonna have a big uh, a big group of players going to the World Cup. We wanna make sure that that they leave with that feeling of accomplishment and and making sure that the, the fans are, are not gonna see them for a while. They they are already looking forward to them coming back because of the fun they have watching them play as they've done this season. So so yeah, it's a bit. Uh, a bit of a special game, but for us, it's a question of making sure that we play the game and not the occasion. And and it will be a very tough game. I think Chicago is probably getting sometimes less points that they deserve. Um, I think they, they they did a very good game last week against against Portland. We've seen them uh, beating away not long ago. LA, you know how how tight this league is at the moment. It, it, if you relax because we are playing one of the teams at the bottom, then you're going to get punished. So it's an important game for us and one where they take him very seriously as well. Thank you, Coach. Up next, John Lupo and Jonathan Tanwell. If you have a question, please click the raise hand icon. John? There we go. Thank you, uh, Krista. Uh, Juan Carlos, with all the excitement around the send-off game, this being, <clears throat> excuse me, the first of three straight matches at home against a team. As you said, that despite them being at the bottom of the league has had some very good performances. What do you think will be some of the keys in beating Chicago and also harnessing all the excitement and all the emotion that's going to be around this send-off game before some of your players leave for the World Cup? Yeah, well, I think we need to keep doing what we've been doing well, which is limiting chances for them, the opposition with our with our compactness and work defensively. Uh, and uh, comparing to the Houston game, I think we were very good uh, on this last game in terms of our build up, coming away from pressure, being able to get into the final third, and I think that some of the numbers is is outstanding. But we need to be better when when it comes to to facing the opposition's goal. We really need to. To be more clinical, understand better what we, you know, execute better uh, in those key moments because you know we all know that goals uh, is what change games. When we've been able to take the lead and especially take the lead early, is something is normally games that we've end up winning. So I think that's something that we definitely need to to push on and, and making sure that that we do that well and and do that with with a style and um, engaging with our fans, no? All right, next question will go to Jonathan Tannenwell. Jonathan? Thanks, Chris. Hi, Juan Carlos. Uh, Hi. I don't think I've had the opportunity to ask you this yet, but uh, what do you make of what's going on in Spain with, with their World Cup team? And 
How closely have you been following that and how many of the people involved do you know well? Yeah, obviously I've been there and I know uh, some of the coaches because when you coach in a country at the professional level, you have a relation with the coaches. Uh, then I know really well the players. So I think obviously there was a lot of, I would say, controversy around it uh, because the, the players were having certain demands. Then there was a moment where there was a lot of people out. Now a lot of that people has come back, to be honest. I will have to check exactly who is in, who is out. But I know a lot of them have come back. And I, you know, I think they're a very good team. Uh, a lot of them, obviously, they are uh, Champions League winners with Barcelona, one of the best teams in the world, if not the best at the moment. And it will be exciting, exciting to watch. No, uh, the you know Spain has some very talented players: Aitana Bumati, Jenny, they go straight up from which is a top goal scorer, top striker. They have you know a back line that is very solid and. I'm very creative as well, so it will be an exciting, an exciting team to watch, and and for me it will be tough. No, I was talking to 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 Christy, to Lean, and and to Kelly, and for me it will be the first time that I actually won another country to win. That is not mine because obviously they are they are there. Uh, the same with the other with the other internationals that are going. Maybe the US have a little bit more chance, so I will be supporting all of them. Uh, but I think of all of them, I think the U.S. have a very good chance. So, so yeah, it will be it will be interesting, and I think Spain will do really, really well. Yeah. So, looking forward to watch every single game. All right, coach. And our thank last, you, Jonathan. Our last question will go to Sean McCaffrey. Coach, oh, just real quick, for not just the players in this country, but the others mentioned. How much lobbying? How much campaigning do you and your staff do? for the national team coaches and ask them to get a look at your players have them really consider your players and all that yeah well I've, obviously through experience you understand that our coaches that like to have a little bit more relation with with the um, with the club coach uh, some national team coaches that they don't really want to have that relation or they maybe don't consider it's that important uh, i have to say that normally the the countries that do the best or that have a lot of you know that have probably end up having better teams they are normally coaches that have more contact with with club coaches i've had a lot of contact with with Blatko through through from the beginning since i joined we have a very very good relation i know him obviously from my time at tottenham with with Alex and and we've been in constant communication to see how the players were, how the players were doing. Uh, obviously, they see them for a short period of time. He's come to a lot of our games, so in that case, it's, it's a very fluent and, and very good relation. And obviously, the fact that he's on this country, he facilitates things compared to others. But also with uh, Ireland, with Vera, it's the special case of Sine, you no, know, a player that was coming out of. You know, out of um, from from that pay period of retirement, coming back in and. We spoke, it was funny because we spoke about it. She, she went in like some sort of just to see how she was. And we spoke uh, about how surprised she was going to be. And then she she said that was right. They were very surprised with her. And, you know, the rest is history. You saw her starting with Ireland already, probably being in the uh, pre, no, it's a pre list. Uh, so, so very, very good, I think. And the same when I was at Houston with Sarina from England. Uh, it's 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 always good, and I enjoy. It. I think it's a, it's an honor to have players that defend their country internationally because that means that you are working with them in a, in a good way in your club. No, so so for me, it's always good when when players go and and play for their national team. All right, thank you, coach. Thank you for media for joining us. We will have a recording of this available. Pop it into the NWSL Slack channel and also send it out via email. If you need anything at all, please feel free to reach out. Otherwise, uh, we look forward to your coverage coming up to our June 25th match, which is also a World Cup send off. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, guys. Have a good day and thank you for covering us. See you soon.